Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed Ferrari, and I'm in Moto 10.1 version 2, and I thought I would do a demonstration on how to create a procedural tube or hose. So I'm in the modeling layout right now, and I'm going to come over to the procedural tab right here. And the procedural tab consists of the item list above the procedural stack. So the first thing I'm going to do is just this is just preference. I'm going to drag my empty mesh item beneath the camera and directional light. I'm going to name this empty mesh item um, tube. Okay, and then in the procedural uh, section, I'm going to add an item and I'm going to double click cylinder. So here's our procedural cylinder. Now the procedural cylinder has its own properties and we can uh, change the radius from 500 millimeters to 200 millimeters. I'm just going to do that for the, the X and the Z, and I'll leave the Y radius to 750 millimeters for now. Uh, we can also change the polygon type from face to Catmull Clark, but when you do that, you'll notice that the, uh, the cap kind of remains sharp, and that's because we have this edge weighting here it's set to 100. If I set that to 10%, you can see it gets a little bit rounder. And if we set that to zero, it gets completely round for the top and bottom. And it starts to look a little bit more capsule-like. Uh, but for our purposes, I'm just going to return that to 100%. And I'll return to face mode, because we're not going to be working in uh, Catmull Clark right now. And I'm going to remove the single polygons from the top and bottom. So we don't want caps. So I'll choose none for cap top and none for cap bottom. So now we're left with this kind of hollow uh, cylinder. Now, how do we give it thickness? Well, there's a thickness or a thicken mesh operation. So to get that, I'm going to click add item. And in this text field, I'll just start to type thicken. And it filters out everything that's not thicken. So all we have to do is double click this uh, thicken mesh operation. So we get these handles and this blue arrow allows us to alter the thickness of the cylinder. Now because it's procedural, we can always uh, return to the cylinder, which is below the thicken mesh operation, and we can change the sides down to uh, 6, or uh, we can change the segments from 12 to 4. So we can still make uh, adjustments to the base cylinder, and that will be propagated uh, through whatever future mesh operations we have uh, on top of it. So for our purposes, I'm going to return to 24 uh, sides. And uh, segments doesn't really matter, but I'll go back to 8. And uh, let's talk about how we would get this cylinder to follow a path. Because right now, there's not a whole lot we can do with this uh, cylinder. So the first thing that we'll do is I'll change this uh, radius in the y direction to 0. And I'm also going to get rid of the thicken. The thicken. We just don't need it for now. So I'm going to right click and delete it. And we'll add that back later. So with this cylinder only having uh, dimensions in the x and y and a zero uh, y radius, we're basically left with this circle. Uh, so what we need to do is we need a, a curve because we're essentially going to extrude this circle along a curve. So I'm going to press N to make a new mesh item. And this mesh item uh, is in the item list, uh, not in the procedural stack, because this mesh item is just going to be a regular uh, mesh item. So I'll rename this uh, CRV for curve 01. And I'm going to uh, hold Control spacebar to bring up my uh, viewport pie menu, uh, or the view pie menu. And I'm going to go to the front view. And I can tell this is our origin right here. I'll just, what I'm going to do is activate the B spline tool but I want to activate snapping first. The hot key for snapping is X, but I want snapping with options. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on the snapping button, and I'll pull off this popover, and I'm going to uh, switch on grid snapping, and I'll turn off vertex snapping. Now I'll activate the B-spline tool, and I'm in add mode, so now I can just start adding points for our B-spline. I'm gonna start at the origin and then click on every other grid unit until we have six. And then I'll hit spacebar to drop the tool. And let me just check in the right view. So I'll hit control spacebar to go into the right view. 
And I'm just making sure that this uh, uh, curve is along the y dimension, or the y-axis. So OK, that curve looks a little bit small. I, I could either uh, scale it up, or I can scale this um, circle down. OK, um, I'm going to get rid of the snapping. So I'll turn snapping off. And I'll return it to vertex snapping and turn off grid snapping. And then I'll just close this snapping popover. And I'm going to return to the tube uh, procedural item. Now, in the cylinder, I'm going to reduce the radius x and z. So uh, 200 millimeters we decided was a little bit too big. So I'll switch that down to 50 millimeters in the x and 50 millimeters in the z. OK. Now let's add a curve extrude mesh operation above the cylinder. So I'll come to add item and I'll start to type uh, curve extrude and here it is. I'll double click. It will ask us for a path. So I'll just choose curve 01 and then I'll hit OK. And as you can see, the cylinder is now following the length of the path, but it's inverted. So we can come over to the sweep effector uh, properties. Now the sweep effector was created with the curve extrude. Um, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, we'll just invert polygons by uh, ticking this box. And then also we have a cap on the top and a cap on the bottom. So I'm just going to remove those by unticking cap start and cap end. And then above this curve extrude, I'm going to add another thicken. And we'll double click that. And we have this blue handle again. So I'm going to uh, pull that out. So now our tube has some thickness. Now, the thing that's special about this is that I can always return to this curve mesh item and then in polygons mode, uh, select it and then reactivate the B-spline tool by clicking the B-spline tool uh, icon. And now we have these points that can be edited. So if I click on one of these cyan squares and start to move it, we can see that I can start to move the tube. So that's pretty cool. Now, I still think this tube is a little bit too thick, so I'm going to come back to our tube procedural, and I'll come back to the cylinder. And where it says 50 millimeters in the radius x and z, I'm going to reduce that to 20 millimeters. There we go. And now I'm going to reduce the thickness, so I'll come over to the thickness. And sometimes the handles don't come up right away. Uh, we can either switch from item mode to polygon mode, and uh, just doing so will bring the, the handles back. So there we go. That's a thickness that I like. Um, now one thing that you may notice is if I go to the curve item and I reactivate our polygon, uh, our B-spline curve, and I start to uh, kind of bring these points closer together, we'll get this kind of undesirable kind of jagged corner where these bends occur. Now one way to uh, kind of solve that is to return to the tube and under curve extrude we can expose the kind of sub operations by clicking this arrow next to curve extrude and there's a tool pipe we can expose that and we have path segment generator right here. Now right now we have 24 steps we can increase that. That's one option to kind of reduce the low resolution around these curves. So that does a little bit of a, a good job, but it's also very dense along the entire length of the tube. Um, we can even bump that up to something uh, crazy like 200. Uh, but I'm just going to return to 24, and I'm going to click automatic right here. And what that does is we get extra edge loops wherever the bends are at a greater angle or a lesser angle. Wherever the bends are more acute, it compensates by creating more loops. And that's a really handy feature. So uh, another thing that we can do is we can go back to our curve, and I can select our curve in polygons mode, and return to the B-spline tool. And so far, all we've been doing is um, editing these points. But we can also create new points. And once we have uh, the properties of our tube set up, Sometimes it's nice to just start creating uh, the curve after we have the tube properties set up. 
So right now I'm in edit mode, but if I switch to add mode and start clicking, you can see that we have uh, basically a tube builder tool. And this tube can be a closed tube or an open tube by simply clicking this button right here, closed. And now we have a closed circuit tube. So I hope that was helpful. I hope this sheds a little bit of light on uh, creating things procedurally. And uh, there's more videos to come. So thanks for watching. Yum, yum.